When I open up social media in 2022, I often see videos from so-called investment gurus who try to sell the secret method of becoming rich quickly. Mostly those genius investment tips are simple trading advice that boils down to one simple rule, buy low and sell high. Obviously, they are right. Everybody who deciphers that sacred code of always buying low and selling high will automatically become incredibly rich. The best thing about it is, once deciphered, you only need to do it at an extremely high frequency and can propel your net worth to the sky, moon, beyond, up to the boundaries of the known universe. And maybe you also can enter the multiverse. And yet, when it is so easy, why are there so few billionaires globally? I think it was Charlie Manga who said, think about it. I mean, if those gurus on the internet were rich, why should they sell you their books when their method really works? Why should they spend their time selling you courses when they can enjoy their wealth on a beach? Yes, none of those investment gurus actually became rich. Learning about investment is best from lessons provided by experienced investors who created a real and observable track record over decades. When I think about investment and my childhood heroes, I remember three people, Warren Buffett, Ray Dalio, and Peter Lynch. Since I grew up in rural Austria in the pre-internet area, hearing from investors through traditional media was an extraordinary feat. YouTube or Dr. Google didn't exist, and hardly any news from the United States made it into local state-owned media. Early in commercial school, I learned that equity investments are the best in public companies from the United States. It is impressive that 32 years later, Warren Buffett and Ray Dalio are still very active in the investment limelight, both at an age at which the average European citizen is long retired. Since both investors created the roots of their success over more than 50 years ago, their investment style is very old school and has nothing to do with trading. Warren Buffett's annual shareholder meetings in Omaha, Nebraska, and his shareholder letters are legendary. Since 1965, he has issued his letter to the shareholders in the old style, long written letter format as part of Berkshire Hathaway's annual report. Here are my three key takeaways from the 2021 letter. Number one, we are not stock pickers. We are business pickers. Whatever our form of ownership, our goal is to have meaningful investments in businesses of durable economic advantages and the first class CEO. Please note particularly that we own stocks based upon our expectations about their long-term business performance and not because we view them as a vehicles for timely market moves. That point is crucial. Charlie and I are not stock pickers. We are business pickers. I make many mistakes. Consequently, our extensive collection of businesses includes some enterprises that have truly extraordinary economics, many others that enjoy good economic characteristics, and a few that are marginal. One advantage of our common stock segment is that, on occasion, it becomes easy to buy pieces of wonderful businesses at wonderful prices. That shooting fish in a barrel experience is very rare in negotiated transactions and never occurs on mass. It is also far easier to exit from a mistake when it has been made in the market level arena. On the first page of this year's shareholder letter, Warren Buffett describes the attitude of the investment style of Charlie Manga and himself. What Berkshire Hathaway is known for is value investing. What's behind this idea? 
Rather than picking growth stocks, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett have created a reputation for being on the lookout for lasting business success, which investment style is superior to the other. Every investment style that creates lasting success over decades is worth looking at, as long as the returns are similar to or above the S&P 500 average. While Ray Dalio is known for putting together diversified all-weather strategies that average about 11.5% per year, and Kathy Wood stands for VC-like deep tech investments in public growth stock with average returns of about 20% per year since their inception around 2015, Warren Buffett is well known for his relaxed, long-term value investing style. Long-term, no trading thinking, helped him invest in great businesses in growing markets with outstanding leadership. On average, his style brings 20 to 21% per year consistently for his investors. And just to make that point, consistently in Warren Buffett's Charlie Munger's Berkshire Hathaway case means 1965 until now, which is for over 57 years. He states in his letter, we did though make reasonable progress in increasing the intrinsic values of your shares. That task has been my primary duty for 57 years and it will continue to be. His utmost goal is to increase the value for his shareholders over time. Slow and steady wins the race. The second key takeaway, the four giants of Berkshire Hathaway. To find reasons why investments in Berkshire Hathaway create great future potential, it is vital to know what is inside Berkshire Hathaway. Warren Buffett explains the four pillars, or as he calls it, the four giants and sometimes the four jewels of Berkshire Hathaway. The first one is the insurance business. Leading this list is our cluster of insurers. Berkshire effectively owns 100% of this group whose massive float value we earlier described. The invested assets of these insurers are further enlarged by the extraordinary amount of capital we invest to back up their promises. Over the years, Warren Buffett has acquired 100% of its insurance businesses. The float of these businesses sum up to over $140 billion. What is this float all about? The insurance businesses operate in the property casualty space in which the usual business model is to collect now and pay later. Insurers use the capital for investments to avoid losses through inflation and have high liquidity to repay any claims from the clients. Berkshire Hathaway can use the float for investments. To describe the float a little bit better, I found the website Finmasters, which has a great article on that. And from this article, at the end of 2016, Berkshire Hathaway's insurance float totaled 91.6 billion. And because Berkshire Hathaway's insurance operations are run at an underwriting profit, the company's insurance float is essentially like a 91.6 billion interest-free loan that Berkshire is actually de- is actually being paid to take. Buffett says Berkshire earned 28 billion of pre-tax income over 14 years. In other words, the company was basically paid 2 billion a year to borrow 91.6 billion, which it could then use to invest. Genius business model. Now, Compare this investment model to that of private equity firms or hedge funds, who also use leverage to invest. But instead of cost-free insurance float, these PE funds and hedge funds usually use high-yield loans with interest rates of 7% plus per year. Moreover, Berkshire Hathaway's insurance contracts are structured in such a way that it will never have to pay back more than 3% in any one year, while a high-yield loan might have to be paid back in full if a private equity company or hedge fund's performance falls below a certain level. Viewed in this light, the Berkshire Hathaway insurance float model is clearly genius. But now let's jump to the second giant, Apple, the run-up giant. Year after year, Berkshire Hathaway didn't follow 
the tech trend, neither in the late 90s before the dot-com bubble, nor after the dot-com bubble burst. The crash created abundant great opportunities since the wheat was divided from the chaff in the crash. But Berkshire didn't invest in companies like Amazon, a great company at a fair price, usually should be the hunting grounds for Buffett and Manga. Warren Buffett stayed away from tech, as he often pointed out, that this area lies beyond his circle of competence. But in 2016, he changed his mind and bought a $36 billion stake in Apple. Since then, Apple has developed into a $160 billion holding that accounts for about 40 to 45% of Berkshire's equity portfolio. The third giant is BNSF, the freight railroad business. BNSF, our third giant, continues to be the number one artery of American commerce, which makes it an indispensable asset for America as well as for Berkshire. If the many essential products BNSF carries were instead held by truck, America's carbon emission would so Berkshire acquired the railroad business in 2009, and since then, it has contributed about $6 billion in profit annually to Berkshire Hathaway's results. In 2009, Warren Buffett acquired the company and took it private, which brings us to the fourth giant, the Berkshire Hathaway energy business. The fourth giant in the empire of Buffett and Manga is in the energy business. Since its acquisition 22 years ago, BHE has substantially invested in renewable energy. Warren Buffett points out in his letter, the company has long been making climate conscious moves that soak up all of its earnings. More opportunities lie ahead. BHE has the management, the experience, the capital, and the appetite for the huge power projects that our country needs. These are the four jewels slash giants slash pillars of Berkshire Hathaway. And here is the third key takeaway in the shareholder letter, life wisdom from Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's letters are not only an excellent compilation of the achievements of Berkshire Hathaway's companies, but also have a personal note by providing life wisdom. And in this letter, he describes what he calls the orang Utan effect. Warren Buffett points out in the last pages that teaching and writing have helped him develop and clarify his thoughts. According to Warren Buffett, his partner Charlie Manga calls this the orang Utan effect. And here is how it goes. If you sit down with an orangutan and carefully explain to it one of your cherished ideas, you may leave behind a puzzled primate, but will yourself exit thinking more clearly. And this is the best reason why it makes sense to create content on platforms like Medium in written form or on YouTube in audio and video format. Still, if you think your content sucks, just create because it clarifies your mind. And maybe it helps to keep that picture in mind. Whenever you write an article on Medium or record a video on YouTube and you think it's not good enough, imagine an orangutan watching the video or reading your article. The primate might be puzzled, but definitely putting out the content helps you to clarify your thoughts and they become clearer and better every time you create something and publish it. The second life wisdom in Warren Buffett's annual shareholder letter is do what you love. It is always a question for human beings on how to create success in their lives. Should they pursue a particular career? Which industry is the right one to make money? Which company will guarantee a high income? Those are questions that I often hear when people want to build a successful career. However, when I read through books, articles, and Warren Buffett's shareholder letter, I get different answers that do not necessarily match the above questions. He closes his shareholder letter with the words, Finally, at Berkshire, we found what we love to do. 
With very few exceptions, we have now worked for many decades with people whom we like and trust. It's a joy in life to join with managers such as Paul Andrews or the, Berkshires, or the Berkshire families I told you about last year. In our home office, we employ decent and talented people, no jerks. Turnover averages perhaps one person per year. I would like, however, to emphasize a further item that turns our jobs into fun and satisfaction, working for you. There is nothing more rewarding to Charlie and me than enjoying the trust of individual long-term shareholders who, for many decades, have joined us with the expectation that we would be a reliable custodian of their funds. The wisdom in the latest shareholder letter from Warren Buffett is sound advice. Do what you love with people you like, bring value to, bring value to your customers, and invest in great companies at fair prices. Warren Buffett summarizes these three principles in his words in the shareholder letter. Did you enjoy the content? Then make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with people who might benefit from this video. Enjoy your day.